WebTech 2025 had about 1,000 exhibiting companies, so could I vet them all? Of course not. But still, I did my subjective and selected picks. This company is one of them. And if you don't have time for the full WebTech episode, I'm still placing you the link in the description, I thought I'd cut you out this short portrait. So let's have a look at BDP and Baratech. The lines of uh, technologies. Okay. The, the uh, one line is the aeration system. The aeration technology delivers a unique and advanced way of aeration through the basic the diffuser and automation system. What's special about the diffusion? The diffuser uh, actually serves, as we can see, a very uniform air bubbling. I see. Delivered by this membrane diffuser that we manufactured in Southern California. The diffuser actually having the pores on the membrane style diffuser, which actually delivering in wastewater condition, 40% oxygen transfer efficiency. OTE Institute. Okay. Tested by off-gas testing technology. Maintaining a high oxygen transfer efficiency by design and installation and operating the system by just uh, turning the uh, air off. Half number of the air readers, no more air. Yeah. And by water pressure, it's gonna collapse, making it uh, like a sleeve to uh, clean the pores. The other half of the uh, air readers, they get double the airflow. So what you're saying is basically like when you have your, your shower heads and you're rubbing it to clean it. Yeah. Except here, the water does the hard work, puts the pressure on it and rubs it clean. Yeah, yeah. And that's where you don't have like biofouling or right, whatever. Right, filling. right. Okay. We have a way without shutting down the plant to clean the air readers. So all you need basically is uh, two automatic valves. You're yep. switching from one to the other and it does the cleaning twice a week and five minutes each time. And so that is a one-to-one -one replacement to the usual aerators you find in the biological plants. They're either discs, panels, or tubes. Yeah. But still, it's a membrane. A membrane has a lifetime. Yep, the last over 10 years. Because the major damage of a shortened life cycle of the, uh, the membrane is once drain the basin, power wash, and plus the UVs from the sun. That will okay. damage the plastic. We don't need to do that over the life cycle of the aerators. Once they're installed in the water, we'll, we don't see them again. I saw you just rolling it out. So I'm assuming it's a uh, brownfield technology. Retrofitting and the greenfield projects are both applicable. With a conventional disc or a panel or tube aerators, once one disc or one aerator is broken, they have to shut down the entire plant to replace it. With our technology, we can put it out during operation time. And you said the transfer efficiency is? 40% in wastewater condition, double a conventional aerator. And they're, I, they're in the range of 15 to 23%. If I play the devil's advocate, I like the simplicity, but it also sounds like I can take two valves, a tube, garden hose, put holes in my garden hose, and I have a diffuser. The main problem is the garden hose, they're much thicker. Uh, the special material and the special manufacturing. Okay. So the special material is the differentiator. It's the special PU, very thin wad, 0.35 millimeter thickness. Is it a proprietary material? It is a pr proprietary material, okay. yep. And also the way we manufacture it. You mentioned 70 installations. Is the 70 installations of that? Yeah. How many countries? US, India, China, Taiwan, yeah. and then Serbia and France. So you said that's one out of two. So what is number two? The product is probably even more interesting that it is the first of its kind. We don't separate the anaerobic and the aerobic conditions, but combine nitrification, denitrification into one tank. Okay. And also integrate the clarifications uh, section into the same tank. Nitrification, denitrification, and clarification in the same tank. In the same tank. Okay. Now our process is one tank, same tank, but it's a continuous process. Nature has never been divided into anaerobic and aerobic water bodies. Makes sense. The bacteria living there have been around over 1 billion years. Why human being we have to uh, separate the natural supply bacteria into a different environment for the bacteria. Why not go back to the nature? That's how we did it. So we put everything together into the same tank, giving them a simulated uh, environment as in the nature, and they just uh, reproduce better. We have been able to breed the bacteria with a much higher mixed liquor concentration to uh, somewhere between six grams up to 10 grams per liter and at the operating condition of 0.3 milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen. Okay, but how? The first thing very important is having the mixed liquor circling back continuously to dilute the influent of the wastewater, providing a much diluted and low impact to the bacteria inside the tank. If we collect samples inside the entire system, everywhere, the COD or organic matter concentration from the influent is more or less the same, which is very different. Conventional system from the intake side, the COD is much higher. Yep, and then you have a curve and it goes down. Yes, yep. yes, we're very flat. Dilution method 
It's actually just by airlift, which receives the same air flow from the same blower for aeration. Is it because the tank is homogeneous? Then smaller, homogeneous. Then. Okay, smaller and homogeneous. Yeah. But how do you deal with the different type of bacteria? The one which would be aerobic, anoxic? The seeding sludge normally we get is just from any uh, conventional wastewater thermal plant. Over about between two to four weeks time, they will restructure the bacteria flux into a slightly denser and smaller flux. By delivering lower concentration, and less food, you bring bacteria. a balance to the bacteria density because you don't have like the big eaters and the small eaters, right. you have like all the medium eaters. Right, which right. makes me think of the mechanism you have in a membrane aerated by a reactor just without the membrane. Uh -huh. That's right. The impact of the bacteria is lower and then they tend to grow slower. Once they grow slower, they also grow thinner biofilm. That will allow them to grow with a higher population, number one. Number two, the penetration of a DO and also the organic matter to be absorbed by the bacteria flux also increase the efficiency. That must reduce the amount of sludge, so you can downsize the, the sludge line. Yeah. But would that work with any kind of load? Like you have an industrial park with a hard COD, it's not a problem. It all depends on how we design for a particular type of customized for wastewater treatment to deal with some okay. particular waste. So waste you would water. do an adaptation of the design yep. to fit the specific load. Right, right. I see. For a higher concentration of industrious wastewater, we will need to dilute with a higher ratio. What is your scope of delivery on such a project? Most of the projects, our uh, uh, business model, we just deliver the technology, mm -hmm. with, which can process of uh, two parts, process design, and then the uh, proprietary systems, which includes the uh, aeration and airlift, and also the automatic control system. The engineer firm will take over from our design. Does that mean you're giving guarantees? We will give guarantee on the effluent quality. When you have that conversation with an engineer, the activity touch process is 100 10 years old, uh, they know that in and out. Right. And you come and you say, you know what, let's do something else. How do they react to that? Most of them are quite surprised that there's still something uh, new coming out after 100, over 100 years. It's something you can show on screen. <laughs> so you're working with the big guys. And they ask us whether they could do a comparison and an evaluation, which they did. What okay, was it? they didn't come back after that. <laughs> Which you see as a good or a negative side? <laughs> it's all about business. That means you're going in direct frontal competition to an MBR. We deliver the sludge concentration as same as an, in MBR. We deliver the same basin size and with much better result on a nutrient removal, like a total nitrogen removal, much higher than MBR. The only shortfall of our process compared to MBR is a TSS. Because you don't have a membrane. And, right, we're yeah. not membrane. I mean, TSS is easy to be taken care of with a very simple tertiary treatment. The main problem, the nutrients removal in 2030, where do you see BDP and Virotech? In Northern California, we're working with Silicon Valley Clean Water, which is a, a test pilot project. They're trying to test and work together with Stanford University. Okay. The aim of the project is to upgrade and uh, retrofit their existing uh, wastewater treatment plants to meet the new regulation by the state water board on nitrogen removal. We're in the right track in the Bay Area. There are 37 wastewater treatment plants around the Bay Area. Yep. In 2033, they are required to meet the new nitrogen removal requirements. We have a huge potential to uh, having a conversation with all of them. The testing now is in Silicon Valley, it's in the Bay Area. And then by 2030, we may have a lot of projects, not only in California and Bay Area, but uh, potentially uh, all over the state and nationwide. What is the deadline, like the milestone? Uh, early next year, probably. To uh, vision ourselves in five years, probably you will see 10 projects to 20 projects in India, maybe uh, 20 projects in, uh, in the US, and we'll grow uh, many folds in the next five years. Thanks a lot for the tour. Thanks for the explanation. Looking forward to the next milestone. Thank you so much. That's it for today. If you have a bit of time left, YouTube believes you should go watch this. And if you wonder why I picked this company, happy to discuss it in the comments. And I'll see you next time.